Kelly runs a restaurant that sells two kinds of desserts. Kelly knows the restaurant must make at least 25 dozen and at most 45 dozen white chocolate blizzards. The restaurant must also make at least two dozen and at most 15 dozen mint breezes. So we have two types of desserts. Each dozen of white chocolate blizzards takes five ounces of flour, while each dozen of mint breezes requires nine ounces of flour. The restaurant only has 315 ounces of flour available. If a dozen of white chocolate blizzards generates $2.92 in income, and a dozen of mint breezes generates $2.11 in income, how many dozen of each dessert should Kelly have the restaurant make to maximize income? So we'll be solving this problem using linear programming. So our first step will be to define the variables which will represent the number of dozens of each dessert. So we'll let C equal the number of dozens of white chocolate blizzards, C for chocolate, and we'll let M equal the number of dozens of mint breezes, M for mint. Now our ultimate goal here is to maximize the income, so for the next step, let's write the income equation, which is also known as the objective equation or objective function. Notice each C generates $2.92 in income, and each M generates $2.11 in income. So our objective function or objective equation is going to be I for income equals 2.92 times C plus 2.11 times M. And our goal here is to maximize this income given the restrictions or constraints provided in the problem. So our next step will be to list all of the constraints, which will be a system of inequalities. Once we have the constraints, we'll graph the solution to the system of inequalities, which will give us what's called the feasible region. Then we'll find the coordinates of the corners or vertices of the feasible region, and then using those points, we can determine what C and what M would maximize the income. So looking at this first statement, notice how we're told the restaurant must make at least 25 and at most 45 dozen white chocolate blizzards, which means C must be greater than or equal to 25 and less than or equal to 45. So this would be our first constraint here. There's also a constraint on M, the number of dozens of mint breezes. Notice the restaurant must make at least two dozen and at most 15 dozen mint breezes. So M must be greater than or equal to two and less than or equal to 15. Now there's one more constraint that we have to find based upon the amount of flour available. The store only has 315 ounces of flour available and notice that each C takes five ounces of flour and each M requires nine ounces of flour. So our last constraint is going to be five times C plus nine times M must be less than or equal to 315. Notice five times C represents the amount of flour used on the dozens of white chocolate blizzards and nine M represents the amount of flour used on the dozens of mint breezes. And this total, again, must be less than or equal to 315. So now for our next step, we want to graph the solution to our constraints, which will give us the feasible region. Now in this example, to save some time, I've already graphed the lines that correspond to these inequalities. Now looking at our graph here, the first thing we should recognize is that the x-axis is now the c-axis, and the y-axis is now the m-axis. Now looking at the first inequality, we have C is greater than or equal to 25 and less than or equal to 45. So again, we would first graph the lines C equals 25 and C equals 45, which are these two vertical lines. And now to graph the inequality, we would shade between these two vertical lines. I'm going to go ahead and use arrows to indicate the shading, so we would shade to the right of C equals 25 and to the left of C equals 45. So the solution to this first inequality 
is the region between these two vertical lines. Next we have m is greater than or equal to two and less than or equal to 15. So we'd first graph the lines m equals two and m equals 15, which are these two horizontal lines. And because m is greater than or equal to two, we would shade above the lower line. And because m is also less than or equal to 15, we would shade below the line m equals 15. We would shade above this line and below this line. So notice the solution so far would be this square region here that satisfies these first two compound inequalities. And our last inequality, we have 5c plus 9m is less than or equal to 15. So the next step would be to graph this line here, which is a line 5c plus 9m equals 315. A nice way to graph this would be to find the intercepts. Let's go ahead and show that. To find the c-intercept, we'd set m equal to zero. To find the m-intercept, we'd set c equal to zero. So if m is zero, we'd have the equation 5c equals 315, dividing both sides by five. We have c equals 63. Notice here's the point 63 comma zero. Next, to find the m-intercept, we'd set c equal to zero, which would give us 9m equals 315. Divide both sides by nine, and we have m equals 35. So the m-intercept, a vertical intercept, is the point zero comma 35 plotted here. So here's our line. To determine where to shade, we'll select a test point not on the line, let's select the origin, the point zero comma zero, and sub it into the original inequality. Notice if we do this, we would have zero plus zero is less than or equal to 315, or just zero is less than or equal to 315, which is true. So we shade the same side of the test point, which in this case would be below this line. So by analyzing our graph, notice how the region that satisfies all of our inequalities is this five-sided region here. So this is our feasible region. Now our next step is to find the coordinates of each vertex for each corner, because one of those will maximize the income. Let's go ahead and clean up this graph a little bit. Now let's find the coordinates of these five points. One, two, three, four, five. Let's start with this point here. Notice how this point is the intersection of c equals 25 and m equals two. So this is the point 25 comma two. This would be the point 45 comma two. Notice how this point is the intersection of c equals 25 and m equals 15. So this point has coordinates 25 comma 15. Now these last two points are a little bit more involved. Notice how this point is on the line c equals 45. So we know the c coordinate is 45. To find the m coordinate, this point is also on this slanted line. So we can substitute c equals 45 into this equation here and then solve for m to find the m coordinate. So starting with the equation of the line, We'll now substitute 45 for c, so we'd have five times 45 plus 9m equals 315. Five times 45 equals 225. Subtracting 225 on both sides would give us 9m equals 90, so the m coordinate is 10, which is verified by our graph. And now for this last point here, notice how it's on the horizontal line, m equals 15. So we know the m coordinate is 15. And to find the c coordinate, again, it's on this slanted line. So this time we'll substitute 15 for m and solve for c. So if we substitute 15 for m, we'd have 5c plus nine times 15 equals 315. Nine times 15 equals 135. 
subtracting 135 on both sides, we'd have 5C equals 180, dividing both sides by 5. We have C equals 36. So the coordinates of this point here would be 36 comma 15, which again does match our graph. So our last step is to take the coordinates of each of these points and substitute them into our income equation. Because the maximum income will occur at one of these vertices or one of these corners. To save some time, I've already performed this substitution. Remember, here was our income equation. And for each point, the first coordinate is a value of C. The second coordinate is a value of M. So I of 45 comma 2 represents the value of I when C equals 45 and M equals 2. Notice how this gives an income of $135.62. So looking at all these values, notice how the maximum income is $152.50 when C equals 45 and M equals 10, which means to maximize the income, the restaurant should make and sell 45 dozen white chocolate blizzards and 10 dozen mint breezes. So let's go ahead and write this out. I hope you found this explanation helpful.